Hi, and welcome back from the live stream. I'm here with Nate Mitchell from Oculus. How are you doing, Nate? I'm doing well. How been, are you? I'm great. It's been a long one, but I'm hanging in. Um, how you, you had a big day today, Oculus did. Yeah, it's been an exciting day. So pre-orders launched today. Yeah, we launched uh, Rift pre-orders. You can go to our website. It's uh, $5.99 for the entire Rift system. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a wild morning. Uh, and the excitement and sort of uh, demand from the community has been awesome to see. So the original ship date was March. Yes. And as the day has progressed and the site has been overloaded, it's pushed back to like May now, right? Yeah, I, I'd say so the March 28th is our launch date. That's when the very first units are going out, uh, including the units that uh, we're giving to Kickstarter backers as part of, you know, the earliest supporters getting a free rift. And then the earliest pre-orders are going to start launching again uh, March 28th. And then after that, we're basically manufacturing and shipping as fast as we can. There's been a lot of demand, so I think if you go to the website you know, right now or later today, it's probably around May uh, time frame in terms of estimated delivery. But uh, yeah, again, ton of excitement. There are also just like, and I hate to harp on it, but there were a couple problems, and everyone on Twitter was like, <laughs> well, how is Facebook, of all companies, not being able to power this website? What happened? Is just demand? Because Facebook holds like a billion people on the site every day. So it was a lot of demands, a lot of traffic, and a few attacks. And I think we fixed them all in the first you know, couple minutes. So we had a, a whole team sort of cranking on it. So um, big shout out actually to the Oculus team who took care of that and the Facebook team who helped uh, get it all back up and running quickly. Props, props. Um, $600 is not the price point I expected. <laughs> it's relatively cheap. I mean, that you, it includes the price of a very powerful laptop. Obviously, or it doesn't include. It does not. It does not. So you compound that with the price of a very, very powerful, powerful laptop. Very powerful desktop. Even. Desktop, right. So basically, PC. what we said uh, earlier in the year or last year was basically that what we expected was that for roughly $1,500, you were going to be able to walk out of a store with a PC, an Oculus Ready PC, and an Oculus Rift. And uh, we are going to have basically Oculus. We, we announced this Oculus Ready program. We have Oculus Ready machines that we've partnered with manufacturers to create and optimize and battle test for Rift. And we're going to have bundles uh, available of these PCs with the Rift for $14.99 at the end of the day. Cool. So, and, and with this um, March 28th ship date, can you also walk into a store and get this stuff at that point? Great question. So we're going to have a very limited uh, retail launch in April. With um, who? I don't think we've announced the details for that quite yet. We're going to be talking more about that in the, the next couple months as we near that date. But it'll be basically a very small um, retail launch but where you're going to actually be able to go into a store and try the Rift in person. I'm trying to think of who it could be. <laughs> Apple is my first guess because they deliver an awesome retail experience. Best Buy is a horrible choice, so I hope you're not working with those guys. We'll have more details in the months ahead. Okay, sure. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, we were talking earlier on the Gadgets podcast about how some of us, and this came from Matt, and he promised that it was totally unfounded, that he had no research whatsoever to back up this claim. But he said he thinks you guys are making, like, it's kind of a wash in terms of the hardware and the price point. Yeah, we've actually, uh, you know, we always wanted to make the absolute best virtual reality system that we could, but we also wanted to make it affordable. And we are basically selling the Rift um, at cost, effectively. So we're not making any significant profit on it. Um, and that's really about getting this out into as many people's hands as possible. You know, we want the Rift to be in millions, tens of millions, you know, hundreds of millions of people to bring them into VR. And that's ultimately the goal. And that's really key from the developer standpoint, too. Because what we're trying to do is kickstart this VR ecosystem where developers can be successful. So basically, pricing the Rift you know, farther and farther away from people is not what we want. Um, so yeah, we've come out and said a number of times we're basically at cost, as low as we can go. And we hope people um, you know, can jump in at that price. So how do you define mainstream? Like, is the Xbox or the PlayStation, is that a mainstream device? Or is the iPhone, like, the iPhone is obviously a mainstream device. But would you also include, like, gaming consoles? Are gamers mainstream consumers? I mean, I would, but I'm super biased as a gamer and a tech enthusiast myself. Um, I think mainstream to me is when you cross sort of these 10, uh, 10 million unit mark, maybe. Some people may disagree with that. But... Um, but I think that starts to feel really mainstream, where there's, you know, you generally know someone who has an Xbox, and that's sort of when it enters this sort of mains, uh, mainstream category. How many pre-orders came in so far? We are not revealing any sales <laughs> data right now. I feel like if I can sneak it in, I might. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Um, 
Let's talk a little bit about the Gear VR. That launched, and it's a very different product from the Oculus Rift. Yeah. How is that going? Absolutely. So we basically, um, you know, broadly we see sort of two categories when it comes to virtual reality. You have the high-end, really high-fidelity immersive experience with Rift, and then um, what we consider to be like mobile, accessible, portable VR uh, with Gear VR. And so Gear VR is a product we did in collaboration with Samsung, um, an awesome partnership. And basically, you use your Samsung phone, uh, and you basically snap that into a Gear VR headset, and you can put it on and basically experience VR on the go anytime, anywhere. That's going incredibly well. Uh, we've been sold out, I think, since the product basically launched. It's been flying off uh, retail shelves. And yeah, I think we have, uh, we've seen a huge amount of content release for it, and it, I think you know, we're going to see that ecosystem continue to grow. A huge number of developers are submitting applications and content basically every day. And uh, you've tried Gear VR, right? I have tried Gear VR. What did you think? I, I tried the earliest possible Early version of it. Yeah, editions? exactly. Yeah. So I went into like a Samsung conference room and tried on like something that was very early stage. And it was still, it was really cool. I felt a little nauseous and there wasn't a lot of content for it straight, yeah. off, straight off the gate. Yeah. Um, and now I understand that there's a lot more. Let's talk about content. Like, what, what are you guys doing to get both for the Gear VR and for the Rift? Like, how do you get um, game makers involved? How do you get movie studios involved, the NBA? Like, what, what is that process like? So it's different for all these different categories and verticals. But generally, you know, we have a team of sort of partner relations folks who, you know, for example, if TechCrunch is interested in doing something in VR and reaches out to us and wants to talk, you know, we'll set up time to, to you know, bring you guys up to speed on some of the options, some of the technology, 360 capture, VR capture, playback, gear, rift, you know, everything that's happening in this space. We've seen a huge amount of enthusiasm, not just from games, but from filmmakers, from sports teams, for all sorts of things. You know, there's articles um, every few days now about one of the different quarterbacks using VR to like train for the upcoming game. Um, and so, you know, we have a lot of software out there, a lot of documentation. We're also funding a significant amount of content. And one of the huge benefits about joining forces with Facebook was that we were able to basically go out and invest more in the ecosystem to basically create made-for-VR games, experiences, films, um, all sorts of stuff. And I think you're seeing a lot of that on Gear VR today. Um, a huge amount on Rift. I think we have 20 Oculus Studios titles launching next year on Rift. And you're going to see even more announced um, over the next few months with Touch. I'm glad you brought up Facebook because I, there's been a lot of conversation around what, you know, what the ultimate goal was for Facebook buying Oculus. Why did they want to get into this? Are they trying to focus on this gaming community? Are they wanting to get more into entertainment? Or is there some grand vision of us all walking around with headsets on, interacting with our friends? I mean, can you shed some insight onto maybe what, why that's such a great partnership? Absolutely. So I think... For Oculus, our mission with VR is really to enable the world to experience anything, anywhere, with anyone. We want you to be able to put on this virtual reality headset and just do anything, whatever it is you want. And when you think about the concept of experience anything uh, with anyone, and you think about Facebook as a platform for sharing experiences, those two things really go hand in hand. So as VR technology evolves and we're actually able to have sort of this conversation almost as if we were face to face in VR and have all these people here feel like they're, you know, right here in person experiencing it with us, that's, you know, where VR is going to head very, very quickly. Um, we talked a little bit before about, you know, 360 concerts or maybe um, having a 360 camera at like your nephew's birthday party and being able to attend from a VR headset. It's never going to be as compelling necessarily as true, truly being there in person. But in terms of the possibilities and doors that that opens up for people to like connect the world, um, we think it's pretty exciting. I think the other thing from a bit more of a technology standpoint is that we're really focused on building all the software, hardware, all the, the entire tech stack from top to bottom to enable great virtual reality. And when you think about um, Facebook, the transition they made from web to mobile, if you look at the technology industry right now, Google, Microsoft, um, Facebook, we're all sort of pushing the boundaries of what's possible with virtual reality, augmented reality. Um, and so everyone is sort of pushing at this is basically the next big platform that we're going to see. And at Oculus, we really believe that that's VR. And we're really trying to shape and drive that platform and lead it um, to the place that we think it should be. And Facebook is obviously a huge part of that and wants to uh, drive that to the right place. And so Mark and the, the Facebook team really shared our vision for where VR and AR were going to go. And teaming up just seemed like a natural fit.
Yeah, well, and if you think about what Facebook is in the business of, it's keeping you in front of Facebook as long as possible, right? You want to see ads. <laughs> so if you throw a headset on and make it more immersive, that makes a lot of sense, no? I think it could over time. I, we don't have any ads today, and I think it's going to be a very long time before you see Facebook ads in VR. But, uh, but it, VR is going to be this incredibly immersive experience that's going to bring people together. And you know, Facebook's mission is a more open and connected world. And it, VR, I think, fits really well within that. So speaking of the future, we, we talked about the packages that you can buy um, with uh, Rift and then uh, Oculus built laptop essentially for fifteen hundred dollars is yes. what you said. Um, but in the future, are you guys going to build a version of the Rift or perhaps a new product that kind of has all of it built in one? Because the gear, the Gear VR is portable because you can put the power of a smartphone in it. Um, is there a way to b bring the high quality experience of a Rift? without having to connect it to a really expensive PC? So the answer is yes, absolutely. Over time, we're going to see that across the industry. I think that's naturally um, one of the key evolutions of VR. You know, where we want to go is really this like sunglasses-like experience, where everyone has a VR device in their pocket anytime, anywhere. We can throw the things on and, again, sort of like meet face-to-face -face and have this conversation um, very naturally. So I think that's where, over the long term, we're going to head. There's a lot of evolution and technolo technological breakthroughs that need to happen to get us there. That's something we're really invested in and so on, the, on the research side, is actually not just iterating on the existing technology, but bringing about entirely new breakthroughs in displays, optics, ergonomics, powers, wireless transmissions, um, to really push this thing forward. And again, that's, uh, that's one of the key spots where Facebook really opens up a lot of doors for us. What is the biggest like, obstacle technologically that stops you guys from doing that right now? Like, What would have to change? What's the biggest one? One of the biggest things, I mean, anything's possible today, right? You've seen Gear VR. Um, there are definitely some challenges around thermals, around power, around um, just overall CPU, GPU. But with Gear VR, you can have a really compelling experience. I do think we're going to see some all-in-one headsets over the next few years. To get to something like sunglasses VR, we need major breakthroughs in terms of display and optics technology primarily. Um, because what we're relying on right now is sort of this new sort of divergent path off the cell phone industry where now people are, we're actually designing you know, custom VR displays. Um, but we would need major breakthroughs uh, to really reduce basically the size between the displays, the lenses, to improve the resolution. Um, and again, this is something that we're, uh, we're investing in researching really heavily to see how fast we can bring about these advancements and you know, get us to Sunglasses VR, which we're really excited about. You mentioned earlier um, AR, augmented reality. And we took a little poll earlier who thinks that AR is going to be bigger than VR, and we had three out of four you know, hands raised uh, on whoa, the Gadgets whoa, whoa, podcast. Whoa, whoa. We also, you know, there's a lot to, that's being written about that, that AR might have more of a utility-based uh, applications and a wider variety of applications than VR. I mean, how do you weigh into that? This is a really complex question. I think AR is going to be a big thing over time. I think the reality is that um, AR still has a long way to go. And I think that if you've tried some of the AR products or prototypes that are out there today, they're still pretty far away from being consumer ready to the point where we were able to take these things on the go with us. Um, and they have a lot of challenges. There's a lot of key technology breakthroughs in terms of field of view and other things that just haven't been um, solved quite yet. So with VR, um, obviously we're very biased at Oculus as a VR company, but we really believe that the opportunity is there now for VR to take off. We see the momentum and demand from the community. We see um, entertainment industry involved, education industry involved. We see this entire like, uh, sort of revolution happening around VR, and it's, it's ready today. You know, after three and a half years of developing the Rift technology and gear, you know, we finally feel like we have a product that's ready to start going consumer. And again, this is just the beginning, but, um, but again, that product is ready today versus where AR still needs a little bit more time to bake. Over the long term, I think the technologies are going to more converge than anything else. And this gets into this concept of if you really have a perfect VR headset, then it should basically be able to support some uh, basically AR concepts. If you have a perfect AR headset, then theoretically you can actually have a perfect VR headset too since you can overlay the entire thing with uh, virtual reality. And so, you know, long term we'll see wh how we get there. I think we're really focused on VR uh, and the technologies overlap substantially. We really believe that VR is the fastest path to the best experience um, and that that's again sort of ready and here today and, you know, 
if you're interested in joining that uh, revolution, the Rift is uh, available for pre-order starting today. Excellent plug. Nailed it. Um, <laughs> Palmer and Mark are going to be so proud. Five years uh, from now, you, you've talked a lot about what's going to happen in the long term. Five years from now, is gaming still going to be the number one use for virtual reality? I don't think so. I think that what we are already seeing on Gear VR today is that gaming isn't necessarily the main use. I think uh, on Gear VR, a huge amount of the time spent uh, people are using their Gear VR devices is actually for video experiences. Um, and I think that's only going to increase as the video capture technology gets better. You know, at CES, there are literally thousands of companies here doing like 360, you know, 3D VR capture um, called a, a number of different things. And as that technology gets better and better and better, I think that's going to be one of the key mainstream experiences that brings people into VR, especially for non-gamers. Um, We'll see. I think that we're going to see a huge amount of stuff start to evolve. Again, it's early days, and right now we focus a huge amount of energy on the game space because game developers have the tools, the technology, they're excited, and real-time VR is just so compelling um, for those of you guys that have tried it. Um, but it's going to change and evolve really rapidly, and we're excited to uh, see that happen. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Cool. All right. So we are going to throw to our last live crew of the day, and I have forgotten who is running that live crew. So I'm just going to throw to them, and they're going to introduce themselves. Thanks again, Nate, and see you later.